Asset Preparation Before flying the drone in any kind of silo, you need to know which kind of material is in it. Some materials are more volatile than others and will require stopping feeding the silo 24 to 48 hours prior to the inspection to let the dust settle down. You need space to fly over the material. Ideally, the silo should be as empty as possible as flying the drone just over the material will lift a lot of fine dust and limit your visibility. Ideally having a minimum of 5 to 8 meters, 15 to 20 feet of free space between the top of the stored material and the ceiling of the silo would be good. Silo preparation. Open the top hatch and push in or out as much lying dust and debris as possible. The purpose is to lift less dust at the takeoff and also to limit the risk of having falling parts on the drone when you fly in and out. If possible, try to clean with a brush the area between the takeoff place and the hatch. This is more for the pilot's comfort, as the drone will create a lot of wind around the takeoff place. Make sure you follow the company guidelines to fly the drone. It should include pre-fight planning, drone inspection, latoto, lockout, tag out, try out, Confined space entry permit, if accessing space other than with the drone. Field level risk assessment, including communication with other groups if needed. Depending on the country some other rules could apply. Risks in a silo. Dust. As silos can be extremely dusty if you fly too close to the material in the silo, you could potentially completely blind the camera of the drone by saturating the environment in dust. If that happens, you should try to gain some altitude and get closer to a wall, rely on the live map to find the hatch, or simply the ceiling, and follow the beams to the hatch. Then land the drone out of the silo, and let the dust settle back down for 15 to 20 minutes. Falling concretion. On the wall of the silo and on the ceiling there could be some concretions. These concretions could fall if you hit them with the drone. Thermometer probes or other hanging objects from the ceiling, there could be objects hanging from the ceiling of a silo, make sure you fly forward with the camera tilted at 15 to 30 degrees when you are flying close to the ceiling. This way you can see the different dangerous objects hanging. Good practice to fly the drone. Make sure you are running the latest version of the drone update. The easiest way to check that is to connect the tablet of the drone to a Wi-Fi and do a flight with the drone. You will get a warning message if there is a new update. If you get the message it would be good to update the drone. Do this test ideally one or two days before your inspection to make sure you have time to do the update properly. Define a safe takeoff area. We recommend starting from the drone box about 2 meters, 6 feet, in front of the manhole. Make sure your drone, the cage, and the propellers are in good condition with clean lenses for the RGB camera and the VIO sensors. Make sure the lighter window is clean. If the lighter window is dirty, make sure you clean it properly. If the lighter window is scratched or damaged the stabilization and the map will not be optimal and the window can't be replaced. Plug a fully charged battery in good condition into the drone during the takeoff and landing, the drone will lift up a lot of dust. Make sure you are wearing the right PPE. Right after the takeoff, check that you have turned off the close-up light of the drone to increase your vision through dust. The longer is your flight the more dust will be in the air. You can try to limit the flight duration in very dusty areas. The first step of the inspection will be to decide what is the purpose of the inspection, as it will impact your flight trajectory. If you want to inspect the walls of the silo, the asset should be as empty as possible. If you want to inspect the ceiling and the beams of the silo, there could be some material left in the silo, and if you want to measure the dead stock left, you will need to empty completely the silo. Once the objective of the inspection has been decided, you can define your flight trajectory. Using the blueprints, you can decide how you will do the inspection and what will be your exact flight pass and point of interest for each flight. In this video, we show how we plan our reconnaissance flight, the beam inspection, and the dead stock analysis. The reconnaissance flight. The goal is to have a general understanding of the environment in which we will fly. Meaning, the level of dust, the stability of helios, the size of the asset, the risks, and the difficulty of the following inspections. For this flight, we will fly down from the hatch, with the camera aiming down. About 2 meters or 6 feet into the silo flying further down, would just reduce our visibility. We will then tilt the camera up 15 to 50 degrees to get some visual landmarks of the ceiling, and because, in a silo, most danger comes from above. We then do a 360 degrees turn to visually check the ceiling. At this point, we are looking for any hanging or protruding object that could end up in the propellers. We are also looking for hanging concretion. 
After that depending on the level of dust, we can fly closer to the bottom of the silo following the walls to keep some visual landmarks. Keep in mind that a reconnaissance fly should never take more than 50% of a battery. In this case, we landed after only 2 minutes 46. The purpose of a reco flight is to do a quick in and out of a facility to facilitate and reduce the difficulty of the following inspections. The beam inspection and ceiling to wall connection flight. The purpose of this inspection is to check the connection between the structural beams of the facility and the walls. For large assets, you will need to do this inspection on multiple flights. Using the blueprints, you can decide how best to decompose your inspection. It can be by sector or by beams. In our case, we will be flying in a small silo with only two beams. This inspection can be done in one flight. So we will fly down in the silo by the top hatch and follow the beam on the left side. We will take POI of each side of the beams in a clockwise direction and on every defect we can see on the way. Once finished, we make sure we fly over the first POI and we will fly back between the two beams and out of the hatch. The dead stock inspection. The purpose of this inspection is to be able to visualize how much dead stock is in this empty silo. In our case, the silo has been emptied and cleaned, but the asset owner still wants to know how much dead stock is left. The objective will be to scan as well as possible the interior of the silo. For this, we will fly the drone down in a spiral following the walls and doing occasional 360 degrees turns on the way down. By doing so, we increase the point cloud density, and in a dustier silo, we would keep visual landmarks during the flight. Once reached the bottom part of the silo, we will do 360 degrees turns over each of the holes to be able to scan as deep as possible. Then on the way back up, we will fly in a spiral in a counterclockwise direction. Then by using the point cloud from the live map, we can evaluate how much material is left in the silo. Keep in mind the best practices to fly in dusty areas. Let the dust settle between flights. Do shorter flights in very dusty areas. Avoid hitting concretions. Fly high over accumulation of fine dust. Fly close to walls and ceiling. Turn off your close-up light. Clean your cameras and lighter before each flight. Check your propeller and your cage before each flight. These are the most important things to remember when flying in very dusty environments. Download the data and create a report. When you are back at the office, connect a full battery to the drone, press the power button, and connect the USB-C cable from the drone to your computer. Import the flight into inspector. You can then review your flights, take measurements in the point cloud, add or remove POI, add annotation on the POI pictures, add description or criticality of the POI, and add point cloud view for your report. Then simply click on create an inspection report.